Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to Unbreakable Ukraine. This is the second auction that the Art Alliance for Contemporary Glass is having a meetup to support. Um, it is to support the hot shop in Lviv, Ukraine, where, um, as you know, there are having really extreme difficulties right now with the war. And part of that is affected the artists there because they don't have the tools that they need to continue creating their work. So the first auction that we had um, was work from Ukrainian artists that took the funds and went back to those artists just to give them a vote of confidence and show them that there is some international support for them and their situation and to try to help them out personally. Today we have an auction with a number of artists that have donated their work for the hot shop rebuild that's going to be taking place to try and get um, the hot shop there to have a furnace that will allow them to really be sustainable and independent from any problems that might be occurring as a result of the war. Um, Jeff Hillam is the one that has spearheaded this effort, so I would like to turn things over to him so that he can talk more about it and um, get the program started. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate the intro. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Uh, I'll just give maybe a one-minute intro into where the genesis of this project came from in case you missed the last talk we did a few months ago. So uh, it, it wasn't so many months ago that I was in Lviv at the Glass Museum that's right on the main square of the city. And they had a beautiful international glass collection. And the, the executive director there and I, Mike Bocote, we had a great time getting together. We were able to develop a little bit of a relationship, talk about the situation, not just with the Glass Museum, but then sort of across town at the, uh, the university, where I came to learn that the hot shop there is somewhat unreliable because of the attack on infrastructure and also based on its essentially sole reliance on the energy uh, from Russian sources. And that measure of ambiguity to them has meant that art has suffered in general. The artists, the school, the education, all of it has had to slow down based on how the war has impacted the institution. As part of a general want to upgrade, but also as a desire to become more self-sufficient, but also continue to propel the creation of art and perpetuity of culture throughout the war, they had hoped to be able to rebuild. That's where the uh, idea for this all came from. So they, just to sort of put it out there, right, they needed to raise $50,000 to be able to import the uh, the materials needed to rebuild. And some of that, a small portion, a four digit portion of that came from the first auction. And we are hoping to help uh, continue reach their goal to make that a reality. They have official quotes, they have people sort of waiting to pull triggers. They simply don't have the funding, uh, mostly based of course, on the inability to do much about it uh, during the war. So we are here hoping to help them with a few things. And it's not just to rebuild a hot shop, it's to keep the next generation of artists in the education pipeline. It's making sure that we can help buoy up their hope. It's helping them to make sure they can perpetuate their culture and continue producing art during what is otherwise a traumatic time. So I thank all of you for being here on the call today, learning about it, and for all of you artists who have taken a moment to, to give of your time, but also of your work. So a big thank you all around. With that, I'll turn it back over to Demetra. Thanks, Jeff. Um, we'll get started with the slideshow. And we have a couple of photos to start, I believe, showing the hot shop in Ukraine um, so people can see the university's space there. Um, I'll go ahead and read this first. Rego is honored to present Unbreakable Ukraine, a selection of contemporary glasswork from notable artists across the globe all sold to benefit the hot shop at the Glass Mu Museum in Lviv, shared by the Lviv National Academy of Arts, organized by Jeff Hillam, who visited Lviv, Ukraine's glass capital in the September of 2022, and artist Peter Bremers. 13 artists have generously contributed their works to the auction, 
with the goal of bringing awareness and funds to the Lviv hot shop and community as the artists there continue to create in a time of war. And I will also add here that one thing that makes the situation in Ukraine really unique and different from the US is that in the US we're kind of accustomed to seeing a lot of studios and shops spread out throughout the states. Um, there's not only public facilities and universities where people can blow glass, but a lot of people have private studios. And that's just not the case in Ukraine. Um, the majority of the artists there actually go to the university and depend on that hot shop to blow glass. And uh, the majority of the artists there also are glass blowers. So unlike, again, in the States where we have a number of kiln formers and casters and flame workers and people doing all sorts of disciplines within glass, in Lviv, the, the majority of what people know how to do and what they depend on really centers around sculpting and blowing glass in the hot shop. So that's why it's had a particularly large impact on the community. Linda, I think, okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and um, here's a list of the artists that have donated generously to this auction, all people that I greatly admire, so it's going to be a treat just to see their work, um, and I know that it's going to be really an exceptional addition to your collections. We'll go ahead and start with the first artist, Michael. Um, he is here to talk about his work. Michael, you may be muted, so please unmute yourself so we can hear you. There, okay, everybody okay now? Yes, we can hear you okay. now. All right, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to, to uh, participate in this event um, because um, I, I don't mostly probably know my history. I was a combat veteran in Vietnam. I got wounded, spent a year in a hospital. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, although I am going in for a full knee replacement pretty soon again. Uh, so anyway, my, my damaged bone series engages us in a, in a conversation with uh, the consequences of being in a war. And that's whether it's in the Vietnam or Ukraine or anywhere else in the world. It's, it's all the same kind of psychological result. Uh, for me, both glass and humanity share a similar fragility. The wood splints and mixed media supporting my glass elements in this series is a way to speak literally of the physical destruction that is a result of combat. Visible injury is often capable of being repaired, but exists in conjunction with the psychological residue that is ever present with trauma. You know, we call that PTSD uh, basically is what that is. And that's been around since way before World War II, you know, probably forever. Uh, there's a healing quality to these pieces. Um, uh, and early on when I started to make these, I, I abandoned the traditional glass traditions about blowing and, and keeping things round and stuff. Um, I was just experimenting in the studio and uh, uh, I, I was under some serious criticism from some of the glass blowers as uh, I was told I didn't know how to handle glass. But you know, I guess they were kind of not understanding where I was trying to go with this. I was making sculpture in the early 80s in New York. Uh, my work, uh, the series is a way to explore the early memories of my time as a soldier and to reconnect with humanity through my personal experience. Uh, this work is a work in progress. And it's a work in progress basically because we, we never seem to learn anything as a human race. Uh, things continue on and on. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of saddened by that, but that's just what what's life has been about. So uh, hopefully uh, somebody will uh, 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 be generous in this auction and buy everybody's work and everything will be great. Uh, so thanks very much. Thank you so much, Michael. Linda, next slide, please. All right, so next we have Philip Baldwin and Monica Gugisberg, and I believe we have one or both of them here today. If you can please unmute yourself and talk about the work. Hi, does that work? Do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. I don't know why if you can see me, but I am. I'm not. I have the video on. Um, first of all, I'm. Monica, I, I am here. Monica is not, but she's here with me in spirit. And uh, we're we're delighted to participate in this project. And it's very uh, gratifying isn't the right word, but it feels good to be engaged professionally, to somehow be connected with um, the tragedy that takes is taking place in Eastern Europe. As an slightly irrelevant footnote 
I actually studied East European history at university 50 years ago and uh, very much uh, was always fascinated by the history of Ukraine. And uh, there is a slight discrepancy here. The, the title of this piece is inaccurate. It's not a big deal, but the title should be Running Through Rapids. And uh, the actual cutting process that you know, I think many people may be aware, the uh, Italian cutting techniques is a important signature for us in our work. We actually uh, refer to this kind of cutting as river cuts. And the piece seemed somehow to be relevant to what's happening in the Ukraine because Ukraine has a very long history and a lot of it has been running through rough rapids. Uh, and that's not to mean that the piece is to have a dark connotation. Running through rapids can be a very beautiful thing. And uh, we're, we're just very happy to, to donate this work. And, and we'd like to thank Jeff and Peter for the effort they've made to, to organize all this. And I think that that does it. All right, thank you, Philip, beautiful piece. Okay, next, uh, Linda. Hold on, if you, Dimitri, if I, if I may, just for a second. Uh -huh. uh, Philip, so Philip, what you're saying is that we have the wrong title and we are going to change that to running through rapids. Is that correct? That is correct. And you I apologize it. that I only Don't worry picked about it. it up this evening and I'm, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> running through okay. rapids is a much more uh, better title and it's the correct one. Okay, all right, on it. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so next we have a piece from Michael Barron's C-Forms um, series. He's not here today, so he gave me a small um, note that he, I can read about the, the work to tell you about it. Michael Barron's plays with movement and balance in massive objects. Conceptually, the creative power of nature is in the foreground. The series of works underwater and sea forms embody his personal experiences above and underwater. Deliberately random forms frame internal organic structures that seem frozen in motion. Matte and transparent surfaces alternate, creating a dynamic connection between inside and outside. In complete contrast, each object in the Phoenix series is opaque, and yet precisely because of the opacity, the connection to the outside is maintained. Color also plays no role in this series of work. Thus, the eye is drawn entirely to the contours and surfaces. In the landscapes series, the form is given by nature and represented abstractly in the wall panels. Um, and I'm going to skip down here because it seems like he's going through quite a few um, series within his body of work, and I want to just focus on the beautiful piece that we see on the screen here. Um, as you can see from the information given, this is a kiln cast work, and he's also adding powder within that work, and that's adding to the optical effects in the glass. Um, over the years, he has developed a distinct and characteristic style, becoming one of the most recognized German sculptors in his field. Nature and specifically the sea radiate power and tranquility for him. That's how he started designing the sea form series. The resulting works seem like products of nature grown wild and frozen in the middle of it. Deliberately flowing and dynamic movements characterize the formal language expressed in the sculptures. The naturalness is also achieved through characteristic detailed elements the fine modeling of partial surfaces and edges, the interplay of matte and polished surfaces, and the cell-like structure that you see on the inside of the piece. Over the years, the forms have become more sculpturally expressive and increasingly abstract. Various artists in residence programs and projects in Europe, North America, and Africa have really significantly deepened his skills in both handling the materials and enabling the creation of more extensive body of work. So thank you, Michael Behrens, for donating this beautiful piece. 
All right, Linda, next. Thank you. Lachazar, a gorgeous piece by Lachazar Boyajev, who is here with us today. Lachazar, please go ahead. I think you are still muted. Okay, I just did it. Uh, unmute myself. Um, hello, everyone, and I'm just uh, so mm, happy to be able to contribute in uh, any way I can. Uh, first of all, I come from an Eastern uh, country, uh, communist, uh, former communist country, and I know how hard it is, uh, and I know how difficult it is to have your own studio and uh, people rely, uh, artists, they do rely on uh, really uh, the schools and uh, more communal studios that uh, we take here for granted that we have these possibilities to be our own boss and do whatever we want. And I'm really thankful and grateful to be able to do that. So that's my little token uh, that I would like to donate this piece. It was a piece of a smaller series that I've done uh, a few years back. And uh, it was uh, actually larger pieces that I scaled down really kind of small compared to most of my work. So um, as you can see, that could be uh, even though it's small, 12 inches uh, wide, that could be really big as well. You could imagine that being three feet wide or four feet wide, and it will look pretty much monumental the way it is even in a small piece. So uh, mm, what can I say? And I, that's all I want to say, actually. <laughs> you don't need to say too much of it. It's the work should speak for itself, so I don't want to explain too much, but you got, you know, pretty much the image and you can see what it is. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lachazar. Okay, next up we have a piece from Peter Bremers, who is joining us from a boat on his way to Nantucket. So, um, Peter, if you can hear me, please take it away. I can hear you. The question is, can you guys hear me? We can hear you perfectly, yes. Okay, good. I can't see myself, but that's just fine. <laughs> um, there's a lot being said about Ukraine and why we are doing this auction. Um, all I wanted to add to this, I mean, in, in Europe, we are much closer to Ukraine. We we live with news about Ukraine on a daily basis. We have Ukrainian people coming into our countries uh, to be safe, to maybe build up a new life, but almost all of them will tell you that they want to go back to Ukraine as soon as possible. So basically what this auction is, is not just to, you know, say, build, bring together money to help the university and the hot shop and all that and continue the education of uh, students uh, when it comes to glass as a medium. But what it also is, is it, it's a reach out to our colleagues. It's a, it's a sign, it's a, it's a stretched hand to say, we are with you, we feel you, um, we'd like to help as much as we can. So it's a, it's a, it's a signal of hope, a signal of positive energy. So let me talk a little bit about the piece. So this is actually the first traveling piece I did. It's called Imprint One. And it started um, by me noticing my footprint in the snow in the Antarctic. And you could say, well, you don't have to go to the Antarctic to, to, to see your footprint in the snow. But what I really experienced there was that I was in land I was on land at places where hardly anyone walks around. You know, it's, it's, it was a very fabulous, but very also deeply moving experience to, to make fresh footprints with a well of footprints. And it made me think a lot about life and traveling and how we interact with people when we travel, when we go to other places, how we leave an imprint 
wherever our footstep is, but how our experiences leave an imprint on us, on our soul. And this is where it connects for me to the Ukraine is what's happening in Ukraine leaves an imprint, not just on the Ukrainian people, it leaves an imprint on the world. It changes the energy of the world. There's an aggressor, there's a defender, there's crime, there's crimes against humanity. Um, these are imprints. And life is a collection of imprints, whether we make them or whether others make them. And that's for me the connection between this piece and this auction. Just for your information, the piece is almost 40 inch tall. It's a really, it's a big, big piece. Imprint two, which is a, a more evolved, where the, where the snow is gone, is all blue when it becomes water. Imprint two is actually in the Achilles Museum in Hamburg. Um, I hope that this piece will raise a lot of money in the auction. I hope that a lot of people uh, will will get our cause, will support our cause, and I thank all of you involved: uh, Jeff, Susan, Emily, Linda, Dimitra, all the artists, all my dear friends. I send you my love. All the best to you all, and let's hope that uh, this will help a little bit the Ukrainian people to feel that they are heading for a better future, a more positive future and hopefully peace to come soon. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. All right. Next, we have Javier Gomez. Um, Javier could not be with us today, so I just have a few words to read from him. Um, Peter, I'm going to ask that you please go ahead and mute yourself again over there. Thank you. Um, so Javier Gomez, he has chosen the work Espacio Abierto, um, the number two, because of its title. Open space is made up of three, three modules that together make up a single work, giving the sensation of unity, movement, and freedom. For him, the ideal is a world without borders where we can live in harmony with our thoughts, our cultures, and respect for our identity. Wonderful piece by Javier. This is laminated glass that has also been carved and polished. All right, thank you. Can we go to the next, Linda? Wilfred Gruchens, is Wilfred with us today? I don't know if I saw him, but I was told he was gonna be here. Okay, it looks like Willie is not with us. So I will just go ahead and talk briefly about the work. Um, many of you are familiar with his work, which is um, cubes of glass that are comprised of many, many glass panes. In this case, uh, red anemone is 26 panes of glass that have been painted, glued, and polished. And as many of you are familiar, as you walk around, the piece, the optical effects are quite amazing, and you can really see a, a different effect and image as you make your way around the piece. So they're really best enjoyed if you can put them on a moving pedestal, um, which I think sometimes people do so that you can spin it and really capture the beauty of the sunlight um, hitting the piece and the different effects that are created as a result. Um, this piece is 14 by 14 and um, was made in 2022. All right, thank you, Linda. Can we go to the next? Michael Janis with Transformation. I did see Michael on here. Michael, could you please unmute yourself and tell us about the work? I'd be glad to. Thank you very much. Uh, this piece uh, was made uh, with uh, as part of a series where I was exploring the human form, where I would kind of obscure part of the imagery with cast elements, either butterflies or flowers or whatever have you. But I wanted to do something a little bit more mixed media and have something that had a lot more dimension. So physically, it is a mixed media ceramic sculpture that has blue cast flowers uh, that kind of, I wanted to suggest growth or change or beauty uh, that happens when you're going through difficult circumstances. 
Uh, the title is Transformation, and I wanted it to kind of suggest that, that change and evolution or, or metamorphosis that you go through when you are going through the sense of adversity, so that it is something that you can become better after a difficult time. And I wanted the flowers to be part of a motif for resilience and strengths of people. So I think that that piece really spoke to me as part of something that I'd want to do for the Ukrainian situation. And this piece was made about five or six years after I had a show in Chicago at the Ukrainian Institute for Modern Art. So I really wanted to have something that helped support these people. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. All right, Linda, next slide, please. Okay, Zenik Lotsky. Um, he could not be with us today. So again, I'll just read a short um, note that I have from him. He is the owner and art director of Lotsky Studio for the production of cast glass sculpture. Um, his artistic range is very broad, going beyond cast sculpture. He also produces drawings, graphic works, metal sculptures, and large scale works for architecture. The common denominator of all of his artistic projects is geometry. No matter whether he's creating a building facade, interior lighting, fountains, stairs, or glass bowls and vases, all of his works are characterized by the use of various geometric patterns and visual decorations. The work that you see here is a small bowl, um, 13 inches in diameter, and it's made using a glass casting technology called vitrucel. This technology represents a new method of casting glass in a mold using the knowledge of modern technologies that have developed, especially in approaches to the chemical coloring of glass. The honeycomb structure of various dimensions is created by casting pre-prepared parts glass fragments that have been specially chemically treated and then melted together. All right, beautiful piece, thank you. Um, next slide, please, Linda. All right, Steve Lynn. I know that he is here with us today. So Steve, please unmute yourself and tell us about the work. I just unmuted myself. I'd like, uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, um, this uh, auction is important to me because I am of Ukrainian origin. My father's family uh, immigrated to the United States uh, in the early part of the 20th century. And um, so the situation in the Ukraine touches my inner soul pretty much. Um, I chose this piece uh, for uh, a particular reason. This piece is about uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, who is a poet, a painter, and a publisher. And I, the, the, this auction is for artists to help other artists. And that was what Lawrence Ferlinghetti did in the, in the uh, area of publishing the poets of the Beat Generation and creating not only the publishing company, but a bookstore to sell their work. So um, Ferlinghetti uh, had a very, very long and uh, illustrious career and he passed away in 2020 at the age of 101. And at that time he was still working. Um, the uh, elements in, in the sculpture uh, are from uh, a famous photograph of uh, Ferlinghetti by Christopher Ferver, which shows him with his uh, Hamburg hat. The address 261 Columbus Avenue is of course the address of the City Lights bookstore. And uh, Ferlinghetti uh, gave the name City Lights bookstore based on his favorite Charlie Chaplin film, City Lights. And the quote at the bottom, I am perpetually awaiting a rebirth of wonder is from Coney Island of the Mind, which is probably his most famous poem. The three chapbooks on the stand to the uh, left 
are from the first chapbook is pic, uh, pictures of uh, Le Grand Well, which is uh, his own publication, and then Howell of Allen Ginsberg, and then Gregory Corso's Gasoline. The background, the map of the world, and is from uh, a painting that he did. And also the, the stripes of the flag are from another painting of his. And uh, I hope that um, this auction is extremely successful and that even though I'm not a glass blower, I hope that someday the other techniques besides glass blowing can show up in the uh, workshops at the university in Lviv. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Wonderful piece. All right, next slide, please, Linda. Peter Stacho. All right, so this is a really beautiful cast sculpture, and we have actually a video from him. We just wanted to give you a minute first to be able to look at the still shot and read the dimensions um, and take in the piece. And then, Linda, you can go ahead and start the video. I would like to introduce my sculpture titled to Water Elevation. You can see on the front side two directions, which lifting up water on the top where is the reservoir. On the surface is rich texture, which imitate uh, wild water waves. The reservoir looks like a part of Shepar and Joris Calm. Dimensions of sculptures are high, 12, wide 11, and deep 3.5 inches. Weight is around 17 pounds. Sculpture is created from Banyas glass. It's from Czech production. And after casting object is grinded and polished as well. On the back side is flat, is flat for better texture, reflection, and better approaching of light into this inside space. I hope you will enjoy it. I would like. Right. Thank you, Linda. And next we have a piece titled Ukraine Healing by Tim Tate. Tim, please go ahead and mute yourself. Hi there, folks. It's nice to see everybody again. Um, a lot of you know I've been working on some very large scale work for the last year. Um, and from June to January, I was working with Joyce Scott on a 10 foot cast glass wall that when we first got together, to try to decide the topic. She said, the topic will be now, and we will look at the world as it unfolds over the next six months. And I don't think we knew what a challenge the world would be going through over the next six months. So one of the things we had done, uh, we were looking at COVID. And so I had made this panel at that time when we first started in two sizes, this size and one that is two foot by two foot. And this was they they were we didn't know which one we would use. And then we suddenly realized that at that time, huge losses were happening in Ukraine. So we switched that. We went for the bigger piece and we decided that the U, we were going to make this piece about Ukraine. So this is the alternative size that would have gone in the Joyce Scott wall, which will be unveiled in uh, September, October and another giant announcement right after that. Um, and so you sort of have a small piece of that Joyce Scott and Tim Day wall. Uh, we wanted to kind of pay homage to those people and send healing thoughts their way. There you go. Thank you so um, much. Great. Thank you so much, Tim. Okay, next slide, please, Linda. All right, Yanus, I know that I saw Yanus on here somewhere. Yanus, if you're with us, please unmute yourself and take it away. There you go. Am I am I coming through here? You are. Just speak a little bit louder. Oh, good. Louder even. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, um, as uh, also Peter said, uh, the war is uh, quite close to us all here in Europe. Uh, also, uh, I uh, although I'm Danish and Polish uh, or, or American, I'm born in Poland still have family there and uh, as much as they have been a help uh, for ukraine they also look at this conflict with great concern as the concern has uh, also grown in the rest of northern europe as russian ships are 
locating underground cables and communication cables, power cables for future use where to strike. So um, uh, we have uh, the war very close and we uh, think of the Ukrainian people quite a bit also. I had a piece I was uh, considering for, for the option. Uh, it is a piece I made a while ago, uh, actually an urn in the Ukrainian colors. Uh, it was in remembrance of the uh, Ukrainian uh, casualties. I thought that was a little bit of a heavy piece uh, for, for this purpose. And uh, I decided for, for this one here. Now I usually work, uh, usually have uh, topics of today that be political, that be uh, social, but occasionally I like just to relax a little bit and I make work of just pure joy. And this is uh, one such piece. Uh, this one is called, well, as we see, Island Girl, and just depicts uh, a beautiful young girl, uh, wherever that may be on what island, with a braids hair, uh, actually uh, coming out as a palm tree almost, but a piece just to look at and feel warmth and, and joy. Uh, this is done in a technique also, it is cast, but cast with the uh, two panels that has to, where the image on each have to fit together very well. Uh, they are then uh, uh, painted from the back. Actually, there's a relief in the glass coming from the back. So when you paint it from the other side, where we view it, it comes out as a three-dimensional uh, image. And those two are then put together back to back to create one image that can be viewed from both sides. And uh, I guess that's uh, that's about my words about this piece here. All right, thank you, Janus. And um, just one question I was trying to see from the photos, is this um, piece able to stand as it is um, since it has that metal border around it or how, how does one display it? it uh, as you see it in the picture here, it stands. Okay. So, uh, yeah. All right, great. I just wanted to be sure since the background was black and it was a little bit difficult to discern. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think, yeah. um, Linda, is that our last artist on the list? Okay, so bidding is open today. So to participate, you can create an account and register to bid. You can leave bids in advance or arrange to participate live online or by phone on the day of the sale. Um, a very big thank you to Suzanne Perot also and Rego Auctions for helping to organize this event. I think that one thing that um, really stands out is that last year with the designation of International Year of Glass, it really got us thinking um, more critically about our international connection around the world with glass and not just in terms of exhibitions and things that are going on, but I think also just to really underline and acknowledge that we are all connected as a global community and we have a responsibility to try and help out when we can and really support um, the growth and sustainability of glass art around the world. So I'm really happy that AACG has been able to help out with this effort. Um, I want to thank all of the artists that have donated and in particular those that took the time to be with us today. Thank you, Jeff Hillam and Peter for organizing this auction. And um, I hope that you will bid high and bid often as they say. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and stop the recording so that if people would like to unmute themselves and talk to the artists, they can do so. Thank you.